U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is set for another round of high-stakes shuttle diplomacy in the Middle East. America's top diplomat will visit eight countries and the West Bank in just seven days. This as fears mount of an all-out regional war. It is in no one's interest, not Israel's, not the region's, not the world's, for this conflict to spread beyond Gaza. Here's what's happening in the region today. ISIS is claiming responsibility for the twin bombings in Iran yesterday that killed dozens of people. In Iraq, officials are denouncing a U.S. strike on an Iranian-linked militia commander in the heart of Baghdad. In Lebanon, thousands attended the funeral of the deputy Hamas leader killed earlier this week in a suspected Israeli assassination. Hezbollah is vowing to respond. Instability continues in the Red Sea with the Houthis apparently undeterred by the U.S.-led force tasked with stopping the Iranian-backed group at group's attacks on commercial vessels. And in Gaza, Israel continues its war. The Hamas-run health ministry says more than 22,000 Palestinians have been killed so far. Rhonda Sleem is a senior fellow and director of the Conflict Resolution and Track to Dialogues program at the Middle East Institute. Hello and welcome to Power in Politics. Good to be with you. Rhonda, you said today it's hard to see how an all-out war can be prevented in the Middle East. What makes you say that? It's just there are too many uh, accelerating um, developments, you know, assassination in different countries, uh, uh, threats being exchanged. Um, so it looks like somehow too many developments in a short period of time that eventually is are leading us to some kind of a tipping point. We don't know what will be the final trigger for this all-out war, but I see an escalatory trend that's picking up in pace and, and, and having a cumulative effect on a number of actors in the region uh, that might lead eventually somebody, some actor, some party to make a mistake, which will then push the region into a, an all-out war. And what do you think that potential tipping point or red line could be? Or is it even possible to speculate, given how many variables there are at play? Exactly. It's very difficult to speculate. This is a multiple front, multiple side uh, war. And uh, actions by different actors are, um, have impact uh, on in ways that are sometimes unpredictable and and so it's 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 very hard uh, to 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 predict that but what you see is that as i said there is this escalatory trend that is picking up in pace and people are trying to test each other's resolve you know in terms of standing up to each other's um, escalation and um, and uh, and so Again, we might end up going into a war, which at this moment, really, no, most of the actors, if not all the actors, regionally and internationally, do not want to go into. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned unpredictability and the various actors at play here. Uh, on the twin bombings in Iran, we learned today that ISIS is claiming responsibility for that. How might that influence the tensions in the region? That's a new entrant, again, into this complicated uh, conflict uh, uh, situation. Uh, at least a new entrant for this conflict. I mean, it's not a new entrant in, in a conflict, uh, in the conflicts in the region. It's in this particular conflict system that we are experiencing as a result of the war, uh, Israel's war uh, on Gaza. And, of course, following uh, Hamas attack uh, on October 7. Uh, so that will complicate things because it's, ent it's, it's bringing into a sectarian dimension, bringing in a conflict between, uh, you know, ISIS and Iran that has always been there, that has been kept, you know, at bay at different points, although ISIS has, you know, uh, organized attacks in the past against the Islamic Republic. And, and, and that is going, again, to add another level of tension to an already complicated conflict situation. I want to turn now to Lebanon. Thousands of people there attended the funeral of uh, assassinated Deputy Hamas leader Salah el Arouri. Hezbollah has vowed to respond against Israel, though Israel has not confirmed 
or, or denied that it is in fact responsible for this. Uh, from your vantage point, what is Hezbollah prepared to do? Yesterday, uh, Hezbollah Secretary General uh, gave a speech in which he said, uh, very much in line with the statement issued by Hezbollah following the assassination, that this is not going to go unanswered, that there will be a punishment to follow. At the same time, in the same speech, he said that um, their escalation on the Lebanon southern border has been incremental, proportional, again, seeking to avoid dragging the war or being baited into a larger war by Israel. I would, I would assume he's going to follow the same kind of criteria in designing this response to al-Aruri assassination. But we also heard a statement from Hamas saying that the response to al-Aruri assassination is going to come from Hamas itself and maybe inside Palestinian territories. So we don't know yet, mm -hmm. but we know that Nasrallah has said that they will answer, they will answer uh, to this assassination. And 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 based again on, on that record so far, it looks like he said there will be a balanced response to avoid dragging the war into the escalation, while saying that if where if they were to be forced into a war, there will be no limits to what kind of response they will they will have. Now, amidst all this, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is headed to the region on a diplomatic mission. His trip will include a visit to Israel, where the government insists its war against Hamas will continue for months. What do you make of the Blinken trip, and what are you expecting to see? I mean, again, the U.S. has been trying to de-escalate the situation and uh, prevent a regional expansion of the war that's taking place in Gaza. Uh, I don't know. I mean, so far they have been successful in doing that. But again, this recent recent spate of assassination, uh, recent escalation is going to make uh, his, his task a little bit uh, more complicated, um, especially on the Lebanese-Israeli uh, front. Uh, I think the US, it's the only actor right now that's able to engage in that kind of preventive diplomacy. Uh, now, in Lebanon, it's going to be very hard to, for, um, uh, you know, American diplomats to have listening ear at this moment uh, to their, uh, uh, to their uh, uh, proposals for uh, de-escalation, partly because of the assassination of al-Aruri. But, in, in, but going forward after a certain time, I think there will be interest uh, in Lebanon, interest in, also in Hezbollah, on avoiding, again, the kind of escalation that drags the country into a major war. Now, whether Israel wants to avoid that larger war, that larger escalation, I don't know. You know, um, so, but today, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said uh, in his meeting with the visiting American official that the situation between Lebanon, and, between Hezbollah and Israel, especially in terms of the presence of Hezbollah, uh, in the border region south of the Litani River has to be resolved uh, either by force or by diplomacy. I hope that American diplomacy will win the day and that force will be prevented and avoided. Rhonda, on that note, I wanted to ask you about one more topic. The U.S. and 12 of its allies, including Canada, issued a warning again yesterday to the Houthis to stop the attacks in the Red Sea. The U.N. Security Council issued a statement on that today. How do you see that particular flashpoint playing out? You know, one thing that we have been underestimating since the beginning of this war is the Houthis' desire uh, to show their credential uh, to Iran, to Hezbollah, to the other members of the axis of resistance, their credential as a member of this resistance network. So on one hand, the Houthis are very much influenced by Hezbollah more than by Iran. And, um, you know, look at Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, with lots of respect and reverence. But, and, and, and they are likely to listen to, uh, you know, uh, guidance or to, not orders, but guidance from Hezbollah to uh, tone down their actions or to refrain from certain kind of action that might cause a large escalation. But on the other hand, also Houthis dance to their own tune, you know, and, and, and uh, somehow we have to be cognizant of the fact that there are 
limits to how much they can be controlled by Iran, by Hezbollah, and their desire of establishing themselves as a as a strong, uh, reliable member of the axis of resistance. Mm. Well, on a related note, Rhonda, you speak about who listens to who and how much pull uh, some of these actors have with each other. The U.S. continues to support Israel, even as it tries to prevent this war from expanding and cool tensions in the region. How might that complicate Blinken's diplomatic efforts? The U.S. has lost a lot of credibility uh, in, in a good part of the region, uh, not necessarily in, in the Gulf, in the Arab Gulf, because I think those countries uh, have, have so far, you know, tried to, uh, claim, have tried to make the case for avoiding the war, avoiding the expansion of the war. But at the same time, they, there is no love lost between uh, them and, uh, and Hamas. There is no love lost between them and Hezbollah. There is no love lost between them and the Houthis. And so in, in one way, if the war uh, were to weaken these elements and the role they, can, they play in the region, be it Hezbollah, be it Hamas, be it Houthis, be it their patron or their, uh, their, their stronger ally, Iran, I don't think they are going to stand in that in, in 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 the way of this war. At least they have shown until now that um, they are not going to be standing in the way, despite uh, the calls for uh, for ending the war. However, uh, you know, I I think the I think it's going to be uh, hard for the U.S. at this point to deter. Uh, these other the actions by these elements of the resistance network, be it Iraqi militias, be it uh, Hezbollah, be it uh, the Houthis, partly because they are now in members of a network that is funded, trained, supported by Iran. And a strategic objective of this network is to prevent the elimination of any member of this network. And as long as Israel's mm. stated objective is uh, elimination of Hamas. You are going to see these other actors going into and escalating in whatever way they can in order to up the pressure on America, on the United States and on Israel to stop the war in Gaza. And as long as the United States is not calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, I think there's going to be limit to how much they can achieve uh, through diplomacy with, uh, with, with the region. All right, we have to leave it there. Rhonda Sleem is a senior fellow at the Middle East Institute. I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you.